What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. My name is John McGrath and this is my YouTube channel, Man in Shade. Now today I want to build a power tool rack, so that's what this video is going to be about. I need to get this worktop cleared off. It's very cluttered. I want to get all my tools up on the wall. So I want to build a charging station and a power tool rack. Some more I can put my radio, some more I can put all the drill bits, bits and bobs for these drills. I also want to lay it big enough so I can add more impact wrenches and stuff to it. But it's got to take this much stuff at least and the chargers, batteries must be able to click on and click off. It has to be functional basically. So we're going to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I'm going to use some WBP plywood, which is kind of like a hardwood face plywood. Uh, eight by four sheets, we're going to make this out of. They are 18 mil or three quarter inch thick. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep it as simple as possible. It's going to be a case of glue and screw this thing. So let's jump in and we'll have a quick look at the plans. Right guys, I have a quick plan just roughly scribbled out here. This should be as clear as mud, but uh, we'll go through it quickly. Basically, we're just going to have three shelves. I hope you can see that there. On the top, we'll stick our radio and our battery chargers. The middle shelf will be for our batteries, for our drill bits, various other bits. Uh, the bottom shelf then will be, we will cut notches into it for our drills and drivers. Actually lashing rain there now, so if you can hear a bit of noise, that's what that is. So it'll be 700 mil in height, 300 mil deep, and 1220 mil in width. So we're just going to use a full width of our board to make it cut and nice and easy. We'll take advantage of what we have. So yeah, that should be it. Fairly straightforward. Let's mark this out on our sheets, get it on a table saw, and cut out all the pieces that we need. Right, just to make this board a little bit more manageable, I'm going to cut it right here. Now, I need to cut my three shelves, so my shelves are 300 um, in width, so we're talking three, six, nine, but remember, you must allow for the curve of the blade or the width of the blade, so you're going to lose, I don't know, two or three mil off that, so I've just marked a line here at 920 millimeters. I'm going to cut that straight down there. That extra 20 millimeters will just allow for the width of my blade so that I'm perfect for my shelves and just makes this board a little bit more manageable because it's uh, quite heavy stuff, this three quarter uh, WBP ploy. So yeah, we'll just run our coat here now and make this a little bit more manageable. guys we have our panels cut out now so I have we have our two side panels and we have our three shelves now what I'm going to do is I'm going to recess the shelves into our side panels 10 millimeters so we're going to use the table saw to cut these recessed slots and uh, hopefully it should work out pretty good the thickness of our board is 18 millimeters so we're going to cut an 18 millimeter um, slot basically for our shelves to sit into 10 mil deep and we're going to use our cross cut sled that I made to do this so I have a test piece here, so I'm going to run this through the sled first just to prove proof of concept and uh, yeah, hopefully this works, otherwise it'll be screwing glue. Right guys, so we're going to use our cross cut sled to make these cuts. I have the blade height set to exactly 10 millimeters, so it should cut exactly 10 mil deep into our board. Now the beauty of our cross cut sled is we can see the actual curve of the blade or the width of the blade with these two lines here that are in the slot. Now, most importantly, what we have to do is line up our first cut, which is our first mark here, with this side of the slot. So uh, you, could, you could make the mistake that you line it up with this side of the slot, but then your blade is outside of our 18mm that we need for our shelf. So our first cut has to be in line with that. And our second cut then has to be in line with this side of the blade. So we need to take our line to this edge here ensure that our blade stays within our 18 millimeters because if I line that side up there obviously I will be cutting again outside the shelf so if that makes sense I'm hopefully this is going to work so yeah so we line our first cut up with here we'll run it through on our cross cut slate and we'll just 
take our second cut here, and then we'll remove all the material in the middle. And uh, yeah, it should work. It should work, fingers crossed. Right, there we go, a lovely 10 mil slot cut in our board, exactly 10 mil deep and 18 millimeters wide. So that should allow our shelf to slide down there nicely, just like that. So now we need to do three on each side of our uprights and uh, yeah, happy days. Let's crack on and do that. Right guys, there we go. We have uh, both our sides now recessed out for our shelves. You can see the beauty of the cross cut slide, how easy it makes jobs like this. You can just set your blade to 10 millimeters and run it left and right, line it up with your cross cut slate perfectly at 90 degrees and uh, you have a perfect depth and a perfect recess for our shelves. So now we need to cut out our bottom shelf for our power tools. So that's the next job. Then we will shape our side panels. We just have to put a just to cut an angle into them and then it will be, we might do a round over on the edges and then it's a case of glue and screw, we're almost home. Okay, hopefully you can see this. I have my bottom shelf now marked out for my drills. I reckon I'm gonna fit about eight of them here comfortably that you can get your hand in around them and uh, pull them out as you need them. So I've come in 15 millimeters from either end to mark the center of my first drill. And then I've just avoided that space by eight, which gives me eight even spaces of 11.5 mil or 11.5 centimeters, I should say, which is 115 millimeters between each center point. Now I'm gonna cut my channel at 44 millimeters. That will allow my drill to sit in and enough room to catch my drill. And the reason why I'm doing it at 44 mil is because that's the size hole saw I have handy, or this bit here, this cell feed bit by Milwaukee. I'm gonna drill that straight through at the center point and that'll give me a nice rounded end on my uh, channel for my drills. So that's the next thing, drill out all of these, then get a straight line off the edge of each of the circles and just cut them out on the bandsaw or with the jigsaw. So very straightforward. Let's crack on and do that.
Right guys, there we go. All our pieces are sanded, ready to go. We have our side panels with our slots cut in for our shelves. We have a nice round over edge on everything that's front facing, so all our front face facing edges. I just hit with the round over bit for the, with the router, uh, just to give a nice smooth finish. That's the other side panel ready to go. Our shelves, I've just drilled a 68 mil hole in the back center point of all the shelves just to take um, all the plugs and cabling from the top shelf down through to our socket. And then we have our bottom shelf down here with all our notches cut for our uh, power tools. And again with the hole in the back just to take the plug through. So now it's a case of glue and screw this thing. Oh man, it's bloody hot in here. And the sun keeps going in and out, so hopefully the camera doesn't keep getting bright and dark. I don't know what's happening, so uh, we'll see. It should be okay in the edit, hopefully. So um, let's crack on now and let's assemble this thing. It's almost time to hang it on the wall. Right guys, time to assemble this thing. Now, you might be wondering what I'm doing on the floor. I didn't fall down here. It's just that uh, my top of my workbench is a little bit twisted. It, um, it has buckled a small bit. It's not as flat as it used to be. So uh, my other table isn't large enough to assemble this. So this is the largest flat area that I have. So um, we're going to use it. Use what you got, and that is. So let's just get assembled. In a case, it's going to, just going to be a case of put this thing together now, and it's just glue and screw. Hopefully everything fits nicely. I don't see why it shouldn't, but um, it should be pretty straightforward. Yep, yeah. yeah, that's gonna to go together nicely enough. So uh, let's get some glues and some screw into this thing. We're back up off the ground. It's almost assembled. We have three screws in every shelf, both sides. Now I'm just going to put the back plate on. That's going to sit up here. So it's again, it's a couple of screws. We're going to use this then to affix to our wall, along with some L brackets along the bottom, where you won't really see them. And uh, yeah, it'll be open backed then for the rest of the drawers. So yeah, nice and simple. We're almost there, and we'll see if this thing actually works. All right, let's crack on. Right guys, there we go. One power tool and charging station rack assembled and uh, ready to go. So it's all sanded down now. A few little things I probably wouldn't do again, using the round over bit right to the edge of these shelves. Um, as you can see, it would have been better to leave these square just so I didn't end up with these little gaps. But again, it's only shop furniture, so it's only a minor thing. But something you guys might want to think about, learn from my mistakes. Um, again, it's just sanded. This is just um, a kind of like a marine ploy. It's not an expensive ploy. You can use birch ploy if you want a really nice finish and something that you could apply an oil to or a finish to if you want something really sweet. But uh, I'm just trying to go with the cost effective option here with this one. So um, nothing to do now, only get this thing mounted to the wall. So we have to clear a space here, get this thing up. We get all our charges and everything on it and we'll see if it works. Hopefully it does. Let's crack on. <laughs>
Right, there we are. One power tool and charging station rack. Built out of plywood. Um, nice and simple. It's nothing you can't build with hand tools. You don't have to recess the shelves into the sides. Screw and glue will be good enough. I wouldn't make it any wider than this because it will start to sag. That's probably the limit of this plywood there. This is three quarter inch ploy and before it starts to sag. It's easy to add supports there if they're needed, but I don't think they will be. It's pretty good. So we have our chargers on top. We have our cables brought down to the center. I have a surge protector in down here with, so I can plug in all the sockets and it's easy just to switch off. So I can switch them all off individually if I need to. We have our power tools here. We have room for some more and uh, with plenty of space for batteries, drill bits, and everything else that goes with it. So there you go guys, another project complete. Now I just need to sort out this side of the workbench as this side is now clear. So I suppose next project, I'll be building a woodworking hand tools rack, possibly. Don't hold me to it, we'll see how it goes. Something to get those bench planes and stuff off the table. So my workbench is good and clear. That's the whole point of making these things. So we have some uh, storage systems that work yeah, so that's it, it guys. I've been John McGrath. This is my YouTube channel, Man and Shit. As always, any comments and questions, leave them below. Hit like and subscribe if this has been any use to you whatsoever. And uh, get the hell out of here and go make some sawdust yourself. I need to hit the shower. I'll talk to you later, guys. Take it easy.